process images using the Pillow Library and Python. When you look at an image, you see the objects and people in it. However, when you read an image programmatically with Python or any other language, the computer sees an array of numbers. In this course, you'll learn how to manipulate images and perform basic image processing using the Python Pillow Library. Pillow and its predecessor, Pill, are the original Python libraries for dealing with images. Even though there are other Python libraries for image processing, Pillow remains an important tool for understanding and dealing with images. To manipulate and process images, Pillow provides tools that are similar to ones found in image processing software such as Photoshop and GIMP. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to read images with Pillow, perform basic image manipulation operations, use Pillow for image processing, use NumPy with Pillow for further processing, and create animations using Pillow and NumPy. This course provides an overview of what you can achieve with the Pillow library through some of its most common methods. Once you gain confidence using these methods, then you can use Pillow's documentation to explore the rest of the methods in the library. If you've never worked with images in Python before, this is a great opportunity to jump right in. You'll use several images which are included in the course materials, so make sure you download those and unzip them before you get started. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements including code highlighting and suggestions. But any code you see running on screen will work in the standard Python REPL which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. So now you know what you'll be covering and with those images in hand, you're now ready to get started with Pillow. Basic image operations with the Pillow Library. The Pillow Library is a fork of an older library called PIL. PIL stands for Python Imaging Library, and it's the original library that enabled Python to deal with images. PIL was discontinued in 2011 and only supports Python 2. To use its developer's own description, Pillow is the friendly PIL fork that kept the library alive and includes support for Python 3. There's more than one module in Python to deal with images and perform image processing. If you want to deal with images directly by manipulating their pixels, then you can use NumPy and SciPy. Other popular libraries for image processing are OpenCV, Scikit-Image, and Mahotas. Some of these libraries are faster and more powerful than Pillow. However, Pillow remains an important tool for dealing with images. It provides image processing features that are similar to ones found in image processing software such as Photoshop and GIMP. Pillow is often the preferred option for high-level image processing tasks that don't require more advanced image processing expertise. It's also often used for exploratory work when dealing with images. Pillow has the advantage of being widely used in the Python community and it doesn't have the steep learning curve as some other image processing libraries. You'll need to install the library before you can use it. You can install Pillow using pip within a virtual environment. On screen are the commands for Windows, And here are the commands for macOS, which will work for Linux as well. Now that you've installed the package, you're ready to start familiarizing yourself with the Pillow library and perform basic manipulations of images. For the code in this part of the course, you'll be using the image scene on screen, which you can find in the course materials. Make sure you've placed this image file in the project folder that you're working in. The main class defined in Pillow is the image class. When you read an image using Pillow, the image is stored in an object of type image. When exploring images with Pillow, it's best to use an interactive REPL environment. You'll start by opening the building image you just saw on screen. You might expect to import from Pillow instead of from Pill. You did install Pillow after all and not Pill. But Pillow is a fork of the Pill library. Therefore, you'll still need to use Pill when importing into your code.
you call the open function to read the image from the file, and load to read the image into memory so the file can now be closed. You use a with statement to create a context manager to ensure the file is closed as soon as it's no longer needed. In this example, the object is a JPEG image specific type that's a subclass of the image class. You can confirm this with a call to is instance. Note that both the class and the module where the class is defined share the same name, image. You can display the image using show. The show method saves the image as a temporary file and displays it using your operating system's native software for dealing with images. When you run this command, you should see the image displayed as seen on screen. On some systems, calling show will block the REPL until you close the image. This depends on the operating system and the default image viewing software that you're using. You'll need to be familiar with three key properties when dealing with images in Pillow. You can explore these using the image class attributes, format, size, and mode. The format of an image shows what type of image you're dealing with. In this case, the format of the image is JPEG. The size shows the width and height of the image in pixels, and the mode of this image is RGB. You'll learn more about modes later on. Often, you may need to crop and resize images. The image class has two methods that you can use to perform these operations, crop and resize. The argument to crop must be a for tuple that defines the left, upper, right and bottom edges of the region that you wish to crop. The coordinate system used in Pillow assigns the coordinates 0, 0 to the pixel in the upper left corner. This is the same coordinate system that's usually used for two-dimensional arrays. The four tuple seen here represents this section of the image. The new image that crop returns has a size of 400 by 850 pixels. The cropped image shows only one of the buildings from the original picture. You can also change the resolution of the cropped image using resize, which needs a tuple as a required argument. The tuple that you use as an argument defines the new width and height of the image in pixels. In this case, you're setting the new width and height to a quarter of their original values using the floor division operator and the image attributes width and height. The final call to show displays the cropped and resized image. There are additional optional parameters that you can use with resize to control how the image is resampled. Alternatively, you can achieve similar scaling using reduce. The argument determines the factor by which you scale the image down. If you prefer to set a maximum size rather than a scaling factor, then you can use thumbnail. The size of the thumbnail will be smaller than or equal to the size that you set. Note that the thumbnail method changes the image object in place and doesn't return a new object. But crop, resize and reduce all return a new image object. Not all methods in the pillow library behave in the same way. Once you're happy with your returned image, you can save any of the image objects to a file using save. Once you call the method, it creates the image files in your project folder. In this example, one of the images is a JPEG image and the other is a PNG image. The extension that you use as a file name automatically determines the file format, or you can specify the format as an additional optional argument. Note that there is no confirmation given if you're going to overwrite an existing file, so you need to be careful when using the save method. Now that you've started using Pillow, in the next section of the course, you'll perform some basic image manipulation. Basic image manipulation. So far, you've performed cropping and resizing on your image, but Pillow can do much more. A common requirement is to rotate or flip an image. 
you can use the transpose method for some transformations. To aid your muscle memory in using Pillow, start a new REPL session, import Pillow and load the same image you used previously. The code should display the image as seen on screen. There are seven options that you can pass as arguments to transpose. Flip left right, which flips the image left to right, resulting in a mirror image. Flip top bottom, which flips the image top to bottom. Rotate 90, which rotates the image by 90 degrees counterclockwise. Rotate 180 and rotate 270 perform appropriate counterclockwise rotations. Transpose transposes the rows and columns using the top left pixel as the origin, with the top left pixel being the same in the transposed image as in the original image. Transverse transposes the rows and columns using the bottom left pixel as the origin, with the bottom left pixel being the one that remains fixed between the original and modified versions. All the rotation options define rotations in steps of 90 degrees. If you need to rotate an image by an arbitrary angle, then you can use the rotate method. This method call rotates the image by 45 degrees counterclockwise, giving the image seen on screen. The image object returned is the same size as the original image, and therefore the corners of the image are missing in this display. You can change this behavior by using the expand named parameter. This method returns a larger image that fully contains the rotated image. You can customize the rotation further with the additional optional parameters that are seen on screen. You can now change the size and orientation of an image. And in the next section of the course, you'll learn about different types of images in the Pillow library. And this is an important area of knowledge as you increase your skills with Pillow. Bands and modes of an image in the Pillow library. An image is a two-dimensional array of pixels where each pixel corresponds to a color. Each pixel can be represented by one or more values. For example, in an RGB image, each pixel is represented by three values corresponding to the red, green and blue values for that pixel. Therefore, the image object for an RGB image contains three bands, one for each color. An RGB image of size 100 by 100 pixels is represented by 100 by 100 by 3 array of values. RGBA images also include the alpha value, which contains information about the transparency for each pixel. An RGBA image has four bands, one for each of the colors, and a fourth one containing those alpha values. Each band has the same dimensions as the image dimensions. And therefore, an RGBA image of size 100 by 100 pixels is represented by 100 by 100 by 4 array of values. The mode of an image describes what kind of array you're working with. Pillow supports most standard modes, including black and white, binary, grayscale, RGB, RGBA, and CMYK. You can see the full list of supported modes in the Pillow documentation. You can find out how many bands an image object contains by using the getBands method, and you can convert between modes using convert. You'll be using the image seen on screen from the course materials for this part of the course. Start by importing image from PIL and load the file as seen previously. The original images mode is RGB but you call convert twice, once to convert from RGB to CMYK, and once to create a grayscale version. The CMYK image looks similar to the original image, but is encoded using the mode that's common for printed material rather than digital displays. The conversion to grayscale gives the output seen on screen.
The outputs from the calls to get bands confirm that there are three bands in the RGB image, four bands in the CMYK image, and one band in the grayscale image. You can separate an image into its bands using split, and this method returns all the bands as separate image objects. You can confirm this by displaying the string representation of one of the objects that was returned. The mode of the object that split returns is L, indicating this is a grayscale image or an image that only displays the luminance values of each pixel. Now you can create three new RGB images showing the red, green and blue channels separately using merge, which is a function in the image module. To create a band containing zeros everywhere, you use the point method. Point needs a function as an argument. The function that you use determines how each point transforms. In this case, you use a lambda function to map each point to zero. To create the image showing only the red channel, you merge the red band from the original image with the green and blue bands that contain only zeros. The red band alone, stored in the variable red, is a grayscale image with mode L. The first argument in merge determines the mode of the image that you want to create. The second argument contains the individual bands that you want to merge into a single image. So here you use the red channel from the original image and two bands of zeros for the green and blue channels. When you merge the red band with green and blue bands containing zeros, you get an RGB image called red merge. Therefore, the RGB image that you create only has non-zero values in the red channel, but because it's an RGB image, it will display in color. You repeat a similar process to obtain green merge and blue merge, which contain RGB images with the green and blue channels respectively. On screen, you can see the three images generated by the code. The red image contains a strong signal in the pixels that represent the strawberry because these pixels are mostly red. The green and blue channels show these pixels as dark because they have small values. The exceptions are those pixels that represent the reflection of the light on the surface of the strawberry as these pixels are nearly white. Now that you have some experience with pillow under your belt, in the next section of the course, you'll start processing images using the library.